Hello, hello, Professor Fiori here, and we're going to start part two of our discussion on using a simulator for three phase power analysis, even if your particular simulator doesn't have a three phase generator. So if you haven't seen part one, make sure you look at that before you go into here. And if you have questions about three phase in general, the theory, there are a couple of other videos on that topic. So again, take a look at that first. So without further ado, what are we looking at? Well, we want to do four three phase simulations. Y connected generators with wire delta loads. That was part one. And here in part two, we're going to look at delta connected generators with Y or delta connected loads. All right, that's all four possibilities. So some of the potential issues we looked at last time were things like RMS versus peak voltages. So some signal sources are set up for a, a peak voltage, whereas power is typically RMS. Some simulators have separate power and signal generators. Some just have a single signal generator. So there's that thing to watch out for. We have to make sure that the generator phases are correct. And there are a couple of gotchas there. And possibly we might have to consider what's happening with ground because in some simulators, they demand that you have a ground. Some don't mind. We're going to be using Tina TI here. Ground, yes, no, doesn't really matter. All right. Turns out there's a very simple solution to this. And that is if your simulator does require a ground, just attach a ground to somewhere convenient. The only thing you have to remember is you probably don't want to use ground reference voltages, right? So if you have like a voltage probe like Tina does, uh, that's probably not going to be appropriate. You would rather have a floating voltage measurement. You might have a, a device to do that. You might have a virtual instrument to do that, but something along that line. We're primarily going to be looking at transient uh, analyses here, and I'll show you exactly how that's done because you want to be able to see the indiv individual phases and peak amplitudes and so forth. The final thing, and this is an issue with our delta connection, is the possibility of shorting of your generators. Right. Okay, so let's go and look at connecting up our delta. So you grab three generators, all right? And of course, you have to set these up for a sine wave and the proper amplitude. So I'm going to use 120 volt RMS, which would be normal for North America, and 60 hertz, again, normal for North America, depending on where uh, you live, what you're doing, right? You might be using uh, maybe a 230 volt 50 hertz system if you're in uh, you know, most parts of, of Europe or um, perhaps Australia, some parts of South America. Um, there are other systems around the globe, right? There, you know, you can, you can find a 230 volt 60 hertz systems or 110 volt 50 hertz systems, whatever it is, set it up. And if it requires peak, like in this case, this is what um, Tina requires, make sure you do the conversion. So the conversion for a sine wave, of course, is you multiply the RMS by the square root of two, roughly 1.414. So for our case, 120 volts RMS is 169.7. A lot of people just call it 170, you know, close enough as we like to say. All right. And then the phase. So I've got a phase of zero on my first one. And of course, these phases have to be equal across so that we have uh, three evenly spaced generators. So uh, when I look at generator number two, right, I don't want zero here. I, in fact, want 120 degrees. And finally, for generator three, same sort of deal. I would like 120 plus 120 or 240 degrees. All right, so now I've got my three generators. How do I arrange them into a nice delta form? You know, in textbooks, very often you see these nice little triangular kind of uh, schematic symbols and so forth. Um, you're probably not going to be able to do that conveniently. There are some simulators which let you draw diagonal lines, but you know, personally, I think it's more trouble than it's worth. So I'm just going to create it in sort of a squared off kind of version. The thing to watch out for, just like um, as was the case in the Y connected generators, you have to watch the 
reference polarities of your generators. So again, I'm going to use this idea of having a central point and you're going to sort of circle around here in, in clockwise fashion. And by circling around, right, it's going to go minus plus, minus plus, minus plus, minus plus as we go around clockwise. All right, so I'm going to start over here with generator one minus plus generator number two. So I'm going to have to rotate this. All right, so here's my generator two. And the same thing over here with generator three. All right, now, Tina, I'm not really fond of that. So you can just select the label. I don't like having a label that's, you know, kind of goofy looking. All right, so now I can just connect these up in a little daisy chain kind of situation like this. And we should be, oops, we should be good to go. So the connection points become the three the wires become the three connection points, basically, right? Point one, point two, point three. So what we end up with is something like this. So I have a delta connected generator over here, right? You see the minus plus, minus plus, minus plus going clockwise around. And I also have a delta connected load, delta, delta. Um, same deal as far as the ammeters, because we're going to look at current in this case. That's sort of the interesting bit. So again, think of the central point. You're going to go clockwise around here. So the ammeters, minus the plus, minus the plus, minus the plus, right? That has to echo what we're seeing over here. And I've just named my components so they reflect the same numbers on the generator. And then we have, of course, the line currents coming out, right? So I'm going to call this point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. So there's the ammeters for each one. You can see it's plus to minus going right across for each one, all right? So right now, the polarities, the phases, that should all be okay. We've done the, uh, the RMS peak conversion. So let's try to do a simulation. Go off and do the transient. All right, look at a few cycles here. Boom, we get an error, irregular circuit. What is an irregular circuit? So I'm gonna hit the help button over here. And it says this error message means that Tina could not solve the circuit equations, probably due to an irregular feature of the circuit. A simple example of an irregular circuit is a circuit containing a shorted voltage source or an open current source. Right? There are some other examples of that. For example, a paralleling different valued voltage sources or putting different current sources in series. Um, in our case, hey, what do you think it's going to be? Basically, it's shorted sources. When you try to do an analysis on here, right, the ideal source has a zero internal impedance. So when you look at uh, VG1, it's basically dead short with VG2 and VG3, right? The internal impedance of these things is both zero. Same thing would be true for VG2 regarding VG1 and VG3, and the same thing VG3 gets shorted out by VG1 and VG2. So there's the irregularity. How do we fix that? Well, we have to add some kind of internal impedance. Normally, you would, you would have the facility to do that in your generator. If you don't, you can just add a little series resistor, a very, very small value. So I'm going to go to a corrected version of this circuit. So here's my points 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to look in here at VG1. And you'll notice internal resistance, I've added 1 milliohm. I want to make this several orders of magnitude smaller than whatever my load is going to be. I got a 10 ohm load out here. So, you know, I want at least, at least a thousand times smaller than that. And, you know, the fact that um, maybe I can't actually make a generator with a 1 milliohm uh, impedance isn't really the issue here. I just need something that, um, you know, mathematically is going to work. Okay, so a really tiny value is what we're calling for. So now when we look at VG1, it's not going to be shorted out by VG2, VG2 and VG3 because each one of these things is a milliohm, right? Two milliohms is not zero. You know, you can't divide by zero and get anything meaningful, but you can divide by two milli and get something meaning, meaningful, right? So let's go and see what happens. Now, before we run the sim, you know, what are, we, uh, what are we expecting? Well, I've got 208 volt RMS for my line voltage, right? That's the way this would be 
specified. So each one of these generators, notice we're going from line one to line two, line two to three, and line three to line one. All right, so we've got the currents coming out here, right? Here's the ammeter for uh, line one. Here's the ammeter coming off of connection point two, line two, and same thing, line three. All right, here's our three load ammeters. Again, following that um, minus to plus clockwise rotation thing. All right, so what do we expect to see? Well, we know we're going to have a 208 volt line. Okay, the line voltage is going to be 208. And each one of our loads, because it's delta connected, will be seeing the line voltage. So I'm going to have 208 volts RMS, which, again, if you uh, do the, the RMS peak conversion, okay, um, multiply by uh, uh, square root of 2, 1.414, um, you know, we're going to be looking at just shy of uh, 300 volts, like 294 volts or something like that. So you divide that out by your 10 ohms, and you're looking at you know, just under 30 amps for this current. Now the line currents are going to be increased by a factor of the square root of three, roughly 1.73. So if you multiply the line, um, bleh, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. If you <laughs> multiply the current that's in the delta by the square root of three, you'll get your line current. Okay, or you can look at it this way, your line current divided by that factor gives you the, the current and the delta, all right? Either way. So what are we looking at, right? We're looking at, um, you know, about 30 times just about 1.73, so a little over 50, 51, 52 amps for line currents, all right? So let's check this out and make sure that the phases all look good, all right? And of course, that it actually runs now that we've added those little um, internal resistance values. Boom. All right. So let's put a legend on here. We can see what we have. So let's check our uh, smaller currents, right? These are the load currents. All right. You can see that's load one, two, and three coming across here. And uh, that's coming in, just coming across here without getting a cursor. You can see that's just about 30 amps peak, as we would have expected. And then looking at these larger currents, these are the line currents, right? There's line one, line two, and line three. And you can see again, there's 40, there's 60. So that's 50 right there. We can see it's just above 50, all right? So amplitudes look great. Um, without getting out the cursor, we can see the spacing is pretty good. The, this looks evenly spaced. These look like they're, you know, one third each, 120 degrees. Same thing uh, with the load currents, that looks good. And if we zeroed in down here, you know, just to be complete about things, we can measure this phase shift, which should be 30 degrees, right? And we looked at this uh, in the preceding video. Uh, I can't get that exactly, but um, right around there. Um, and the delta is coming in at just about 1.38 millis uh, milliseconds. And the period on this being 60 hertz would be roughly 16 and two thirds, 16.67 milliseconds. You divide those out times 360 degrees and you're gonna be looking at 30 degrees. All right, so this is looking just beautiful. Hey, we got a Delta connected generator and we made it out of three individual single phase generators. Pretty cool. All right, so the last one in the tour would be to look at a uh, delta connected generator and a Y connected load. So this is just cloned. This there's no change here. In this case, um, we're using the the Y connection we looked at in the first video. And remember the trick there. You know this would be your common point. So um, the meters we're looking at plus to minus toward the common point plus to minus. So the load number three here is reversed, right? It's plus on the bottom, minus on top, because again, there's the common point. And of course, we would look at the line voltages. We know that should be 208. So again, um, line number one is going from 0.1 to 0.2, okay? So 0.1, there's the positive. If you can't see that, there's a little plus sign right there. One to two is positive. Line two would be uh, from connection point two to connection point three. So again, there's the plus on connection point two. And finally, line three would be from three back to one. 
So there's the plus sitting at connection point three, and then the minus goes back to connection point one. All right, beautiful. So let's see what we get. So I got 208 for the uh, delta, which means we should have 208 divided by the square root of three, divided by 1.73 um, for the individual voltages on my loads. In other words, 120 volts RMS or just about 170 volts peak. All right, let's see what we get. Boom. All righty, so let's take a look uh, at our big ones over here, right? So there's line one. We can see that's just under 300, like we would have expected for a peak value. There's line two, line three. Spacing looks proper, right? 120 degrees evenly divided out. And then we come down here. There's load number one, load number two, load number three. And we can see, okay, there's 150, 160. So this, this is looking pretty good right here. Like I said, should be right around 170, you know? Okay. Um, you know, these are, each one of these hash marks is like 15. So that's actually 165, that's 180. So, you know, you can get out the cursors if you want, but it looks pretty good. And the phase on this again, you know, we could compare it to the preceding one. You know, the, the spacing on the phase between one of the small ones and one of the large ones looks pretty much the same. So again, you could get out the cursors, that would verify out to 30 degrees, right? Yeah, I know, I know you really want me to, so uh, I'll do it. Jeez Louise, okay. <laughs> All right, get as close as I can here. So what are we looking at? Oh, look, 13.56. I can't quite get these things flush. So they're a little off, but well, anyway, so you got just a little less than 1.4 milliseconds and that's going to work out to your 30 degrees as expected. All right. So where do we wind up here? Well, when we get all done with this, okay, we've done all four possible combinations. We've looked at the peak versus RMS, you know, and if you just happen to have a, a, a simulator that has a power source rather than a signal source, well, you don't even have to worry about that, right? You just put in the RMS voltages. Um, you do have to uh, set up the proper phase, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Um, you have to throw in the internal impedance in the case of the delta. And if for some weird reason, your particular simulator doesn't have that facility, then just go back and put a really tiny resistor in series with each generator. And that'll solve that problem. And like I said, the ground, you know, let me get back to this uh, D and D here, because there is no ground. So if you have a simulator that, um, you know, hey, you have an irregular circuit because there's no ground. You know, in the, in the case of a Y load, I would just say, you know, call this ground. Just get a ground, wire it to there, and you're good. Now, you know, what do you do in the DD? Well, just stick it somewhere. It doesn't really matter. You know, like in this case, we're just going to be measuring currents. So, you know, you can stick it here. You could stick it here, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, just remember, you know, you're not going to use any voltages with respect to ground. You're going to get a voltmeter and put it across this, um, you know, or a, a generator, you know, whatever the heck it is. Um, you're not going to use a, a voltage probe to ground, right? Because that would be just sort of complicating the issues. All right. Okay. So I hope that covers it. If you have any issues with your particular simulator, you know, leave them down in the, uh, in the, in the, in the comment section. I'll try to answer those. And until next time, take care and have a good one.